So let's see how realistic AirPods, AirPods Madness 3 actually is. Again, once you set your settings, you need to leave them alone unless for some reason a change is needed. And let's go and play. Again, we're going to use Toronto Island because it is both fairly challenging and easy to master. And let me explain to you why the orientation of the run runways is important. Here, the runways that aircraft land, that's what this refers to, by the way, the landing direction and the takeoff directions, is 24, 26, and 33. So 33 intercepts the two other runways, which means we need to be mindful of the airplanes that they are landing here when airplanes are taking off and or landing on, air, on uh, runways 24, which is this one, and runway 26, which is this one. However, on this, config, uh, on this configuration, on runway 6, 8, and 15, which is the opposite of, the, of this configuration, we have aircraft that can land at the same time on 6 and 8 with a very high probability of collision in the end and aircraft that land on 15 with a high prob probability of collision on both 6 and 8. So we have a much higher likelihood of have collisions in this configuration and therefore the difficulty level of the game is higher. So we're going to run runways 24, 26 and 15 and again we're going to use continuous play. Once again we agreed it with three with four aircraft on the tarmac and we're going to start by sending them to the runway. We're going to send all of them to runway 26. By the way, this to this point is very realistic. Aircraft cannot move from their gate unless they get a clearance from the ground control and the ground control will tell them which runway they are going to utilize along with asking them some questions, for example, if they have current weather and if they have the, the current altimeter. Again, this is a game, not a simulation, so they don't go into much depth. Uh, the aircraft will in reality go and hold short of the runway, in this case is the runway 26, and we're going to change views here to see it a little different. Let's look at the sky cam. And here we go, we just have an aircraft landed. So let's have this have an immediate takeoff. And so far the game is very realistic. An immediate takeoff means that the aircraft will not stop on the runway. And at this moment we don't have any likelihood of collision because this aircraft will stop before reaching that runway, so we don't have to do anything. So far the algorithm of the game is very realistic. And as you can see, this aircraft, because it's a turboprop, has cleared runway 15, and there is a good chance that if we had an aircraft landing there, we wouldn't have a collision. We have an airplane arriving here, so let's see where it's going to land. That is arriving on runway 26 as well, so we're going to wait for that aircraft to arrive before we take off with the remaining aircraft. The reason for that is that once the airplanes turn to final approach, which is turning from going to this direction, they're going to make a turn towards the runway, that's called the final. The likelihood of a collision is much higher. As you see I gave a direction for a, a takeoff, there is another aircraft happening, coming, and right now I'm going to chance it, I'm going to slow him down a little bit and hopefully we will not collide and as you can see that actually worked as we hoped we have that previous airplane that landed holding here we are not going to we are going to let him go and cross 
because this aircraft is going to wait at the end of the runway and this is the reason why I did not give this guy the clear to get into the runway, the active runway. In general, in real life situations, it is the preference that no more than one aircraft is on what we call the active runway and the, in this case will be runway 26 and since we're here we're letting all the aircraft cross now we're going to give an immediate takeoff to this Airbus and so far the design of the game is fairly realistic we do have an aircraft approaching because it has the DHHC designation we know it's a turboprop so I will go ahead and take change this and allow this aircraft to take off as well slow him a little bit to minimize any chance of collision so once you understand how air drive control operates you have no issues you see that an aircraft has landed here so we're going to wait hopefully uh, that will be close I think but we passed it through now had we asked this aircraft to expedite we would have a collision so do not do that unless you follow and see if the aircraft will clear or not you see with five arrivals and four departures we've had no incidents so far and that's what we want, we want to avoid crashes because the airplane that just landed is a fast moving aircraft I asked the turboprop to expedite leaving the runway minimizing any likelihood that we will have a collision on the runway overall with a few exceptions the design of the game is very good and represents reality there are instances however that this is not the case for example the game tries to do too many things that in real life actually are handled by three different controllers we have an approach controller that dealing with aircraft that are arriving a departure controller that deals with airplanes that leave we have the tower and also we have ground control which deals only with aircraft that they are in the tarmac but not on the runways the tower deals with aircraft either approaching or departing so let, let, let those guys go and that's one of the reasons I, I like this configuration is we don't care because we do not have takeoffs from runway 33 we can immediately allow aircraft to cross it without wor worrying about a possible collision again if you click on any red aircraft it will allow you without being on the aircraft itself to issue commands we see we have an airplane approaching and because it's approaching from this side more than likely it's landing on runway 24 and sure enough it is an Airbus that is running, uh, landing on runway 24 and now we can be a little more daring I'm going to ask him to take an immediate takeoff without concern for collision because those are two different runways and there is a very small area this area that I'm circling with my mouse that can possibly result in a collision now because he's landing on 24 and he's departing 26 I'm not worried about the collision this is already safe he has moved down the runway enough that there is no chance for a collision and again we see another aircraft approaching for 24 so I'm going to have him take off immediately he has not turned to final yes he's, he is on what we call base base approach so I know I have enough time to let this aircraft take off I'm also going to let this aircraft take off the game is getting more interesting the more you take risks or the closer you get the aircraft 
and uh, and in this case we are not going to have any problem with collisions he's going to go to runway 26 you need to keep an eye here in in essence in this game you're doing the job of four or five different controllers that's where the game is unrealistic you would not have that this will be a handout the plane that w that has just arrived just before as it entered the airport airspace would be delivered to the tower and the tower will assign it a landing runway and then once it exits the runway the ground control will take over to take it to the gate so again you see you're taking a lot of roles that in reality you wouldn't but again this is a game I see nothing approaching here so I'm going to give this airplane immediate takeoff command and as you see we're keeping the game at a very low stress level these two aircraft will land on runway 33 so as we have aircraft taking off now we're going to start paying attention to what aircraft landing on 33 are doing I'm going to issue immediate takeoff orders on these two aircraft because we see nothing approaching runway 26 or runway 24 and I want to see where the approaching aircraft are again he is on base not on final yet so hopefully we won't have a problem in any case on the first aircraft I'm not concerned because he will take off before he reaches the, the runway he will actually be airborne and let's make this a closer look so you can see that that he will actually be airborne you can see he is already airborne so an aircraft could pass underneath him without collision however the second aircraft will not but we know we won't have a problem because that aircraft just arrived so we had plenty of clearance I prefer to see the whole airfield and the radar to make the best decisions as you can see the game is getting quicker as time passes you see another aircraft approaching and I'm sure that will be going to runway 24 and it is so I'm not concerned with how fast or slow it is so far we're keeping a good pace on our airplanes and that's what you want that's how you're going to become proficient and you will be able to master this game and have a lot of fun again I know I have an aircraft approaching on 24 see by expediting him off I was able to avoid a collision there that's why it's important to look what's happening on the runways because you do not want collisions and you want to keep the aircraft moving right now we have been doing a great I hope you did enjoy this uh, short lesson and please if you did like subscribe and comment again I always invite you to ask any aviation related questions in this channel we're going to talk about a lot of aviation things not just uh, airport madness 3